What's up guys? Happy Saturday. Um, going to talk about a subject that gets talked about a lot. Um, I don't know if it's actually on here or not. I've never really looked on YouTube. Going to use mini Lilith again today. Thinking a lot about Lilith's eggs that are hatching in about a month. So she was on my mind. I figured I would grab her out. Make sure I have a little room to work with here. Um, but what I want to talk about a little bit is um, tubs and some of the misconceptions about them and some of the things that people say, why people have such an adverse reaction to them and uh, kind of hit some talking points about that as to why, you know, I feel the way I do about them. I've got some tubs in the background there. Now, uh, one of the perceptions that you all often hear is that, you know, tubs are small and, and they're small spaces. And yes, there are small tubs. This is the smallest size that I use personally, which would be for like a brand new hatchling snake up until a few months old, depending on the species and how quickly they grow. Baby snakes really crave security. So uh, something like this would work. Now, would it work for this snake? No. Um, you know, and people definitely abuse tubs, but they abuse any type of enclosure where they put the animal in an enclosure that it's too small or in some cases too large, different things. You've really got to size it based on the species and based on the individual animal. Uh, I have some animals that are super confident. I could probably give them a whole room. I have other animals that anything over about this size uh, and they would really, really start to stress out. Uh, now, there are things you can do to fill the space and make it not feel so much space to them. But ultimately, with some of them, it just comes down to the space gets to them. People don't want to hear that because people say, oh, what about the wild? Well, these are captive bred animals. They're not born in the wild. They're born in captivity, so they don't know this vast expanse. And animals in the wild uh, tend to wedge themselves into pretty small spaces quite often as far as snakes go. Um, yes, they'll be out and about when they need resources, but when they're not seeking a resource or they don't need to thermoregulate or anything like that, typically you're going to find them hiding in a space where they feel comfortable. Uh, so we have to remember that their cage has to allow for that. Um, so obviously a, a bin like this you can see, and I'm gonna use a picture I took for the, the video for this. You can see how big this tub is. But this tub is over four feet. Um, it's, it's 52 inches top to bottom. It's like 21 and change across. Uh, so it's similar to like a four by two PVC cage. Uh, now, is that going to be ideal for a lot of species? No, but for blood pythons and short tails, it works really well. Um, now, you can keep juvenile of other animals in there, but be aware, these guys are strictly terrestrial, so they don't really climb, they don't try to push. The lids are not super, super secure on these, so if you're putting like a reticulated python in there, it's a good chance they're going to find their way out, uh, unless you're using the bin in a rack. I don't use them in a rack, I use them separately. Um, I have like a, a shelving system that they sit on, but I use them with the tops. So if they're in a rack, obviously you don't have to worry about those same things as much. But be mindful if you do want to use them, and, and they're only available seasonally too. Uh, so keep that in mind. You know, they're Christmas tree tubs, so you'll find them around Christmas time. Uh, but uh, if you do want to use them, uh, you know, make sure it's appropriate for the species and it's going to be secure or make modifications to, to be sure that those animals can't get out and can't do harm to themselves or something else. Um, so, like we said, uh, they say it's too small. And there's tubs larger than this. Uh, you can buy some of the ARS and Freedom Breeder systems that really have some big tubs. I don't know how big they are, but there's some that have to be, you know, over five feet. I've seen some pretty big ones. I know up at NERD they have some really, really massive ones. Um, and they're so big, you can put like, you know, some of the, the dwarf species of like retic in some of them and they, they have plenty of room. Um, you know, obviously we're not talking 15 footers or anything in there, but you know, some, like I said, some of the dwarf species, definitely smaller males. Hi, how you doing? Uh, another thing that people say often that I hear when referencing tubs is that they're like prisons. Uh, and they said, how would you like to be locked in a tub? And that we covered in the video I did the other day is anthropomorphism because Prison to me and, and prison to a snake are two different things. Uh, this is a species that likes security. It likes tighter spaces. It makes it relaxed. Uh, so it doesn't feel the same as I do when you shove me into a small space. Um, these guys don't get bored like I do. So it's not a big deal to them that there's nothing to do. Um, 
you know, and obviously enrichment is your decision on, on what you want to offer and how you want to do it. I did a video a while back on that, which you can reference to see my take on it and my thing on it. Uh, I'm not anti-enrichment. I'm just anti this movement that everything has to be naturalistic because these animals don't know the difference. Uh, and they don't even know the difference in the wild, as I discussed in that video, wild snakes will use man-made things because it's functional for what they want. Uh, so I don't like this whole thing. If you want to make your cage look naturalistic, is what you want, that's fine as long as you're not sacrificing the animal's care to do it. Uh, but I just don't like that people feel like if you're not doing that, you're not taking care of your animals because it's just simply not true. Um, now, another reason that people get like an aversion to tubs is some keepers really, really shove snakes that are way too big into tubs where they can't even turn around properly, they can't stretch out at all. Uh, that is not ideal. So, you know, you look at a facility like maybe BHB and you see some of their stuff and you're like, oh, what the hell's going on there? And that turns people off to tubs. And that's understandable. You should have an adverse reaction to that. But you should blame, you know, the person putting the animal in that tub and not the tub itself. Uh, they're using an improper sized tub shouldn't reflect on all people that use tubs, you know, any more than if I decide to go run people over in a crosswalk, you shouldn't look down on, you know, Subarus. It's something that I chose to do. It has nothing to do with the car. So don't blame the tool, blame the, you know, person behind it. Um, so, you know, we discussed a little bit the enrichment, the space, the prison thing, and the anthropomorphism and why people hate it. But let's get into some of the reasons why tubs are really awesome. Uh, and now, mind you, there's no one size fits all with snakes. Some species will do better in a glass enclosure. Some species will not. Some species will do better in, in a rack system. Some species will do better in a cage setup. So it's, it's not universal. You can't just say every single thing does better in a tank. Every single thing does better in a tub. Every single thing does better in a cage. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. So you really need to, uh, to pay attention to what the animal is, how active the animal is, what, if, make a checklist of that animal on what its top priorities are. With these guys, it's security. So security is most important. This tub provides that. This tub is almost impossible to see through. So they don't see movement going on in the room around them, things like that. I have other Christmas tree bins. This is a new style this year. They're a little more see-through than this. You know, if I had my hand over here or inside, you'd be able to see it on the other side. Uh, but it's still enough to where the snakes feel secure, where they don't feel like when you walk in the room, you can see them. They can see us, which they don't mind, but they don't want you to see them. Uh, so that little bit of smokiness, or like, you know, you see in this tub, just that little bit where it's difficult to see uh, is just enough to make them more comfortable than glass. Uh, so that's one of the major, major benefits to tubs is the instant security that it provides. So you can give them a little bit more space in a tub than you can in a glass enclosure because the animal naturally feels more secure in there. Uh, so that right off the bat is a huge plus. Another huge plus is they hold humidity better than glass does. Glass enclosures, uh, most of them have ventilation on the top and a lot of people are heating from above or even heating from below. You're getting evaporation and all that's going right out to the top and it's gone. It's not there anymore. And I know people say, well, just cover a portion of the top or all the top or whatever. Well, now you're creating a problem with a lack of ventilation. When you have high humidity, you have to have good ventilation. High humidity and low ventilation gets you mold. Uh, that's just a fact of life, it's science. There's no you know, if, and, or buts about that. Just because you don't visually see mold doesn't mean that there's not mold spores growing too. Um, you know, it depends on the type of mold, it depends on how long it's there, all different factors, the actual conditions within. Um, but if you have high humidity and low ventilation, you're getting some mold spores in there. Uh, so definitely wanna be aware of that when you're keeping high humidity species. Now, if you're keeping a corn snake, that's not a concern because they're not a high humidity species. So you don't want that cage to be super humid. Um, you know, if you live in an environment where the room gets humid during a certain time of year, not the end of the world, um, but you're definitely not trying to get a lot of humidity in there for that species, whereas for these you are. Um, so you wanna keep that in mind. Also, um, you wanna keep in mind that, that tubs and racks are a little bit easier to make escape proof. Uh, doesn't mean animals can't get out of racks. I've had an animal get out of a rack before um, or get out of a tub before. But if it's built and designed right, uh, it shouldn't happen very often, if at all. 
and then there's a lot of ways that you can make it lock that's really easy. Some places just sell a little pin that sticks in. Some people like me, I'll put clips on things. Uh, you could even build a little door on there. Whereas, uh, you know, I just talked to somebody the other day that had, a, had an issue with their snake that was in a tank and they have the clips on there, the appropriate clips you would put on and they have a lot of them. The snake still managed to wedge its head underneath and squish its head. Uh, seems to be okay thus far. But, uh, you know, it was doing a lot of jaw stretching and it definitely threw some stuff off a little bit at the time. Uh, and it can be much worse. I've seen deaths result from that where, you know, the snakes push the top, they get their head out, and then the thing comes back down because they're not pressing that, that force on it anymore. And I've seen it decapitate them. I've seen it break necks, just kill them. They're found dead there. Uh, so it's definitely, definitely something if you're going to do, you've got to do things right. Uh, so be careful with that. Uh, tubs, I don't have that problem. It's not something that I ever have to think about. Um, even the Christmas tree bins, the way that the lids go over, the snakes can't really get into there and push up like that. Uh, so that's something that's never happened. And like I said, these guys being so terrestrial, they don't ever really go up there and even pay attention. Uh, especially in these bins, there's a lot of height here. Um, you know, for this species, is there enough height in here for like a carpet python? Probably not. Uh, you could make something of a perch in there. But for these guys, it works really well because they have no interest in climbing. It's not natural. Now, one of the biggest things about the difference in tubs versus tanks is R value. And uh, plastic and glass have different R value. So if you think, especially if you live up in, in the colder states and you've ever seen where your house is 65 degrees and it's cold outside, but there's ice inside your window, even though the room right there is, is 65 degrees, uh, there's still ice there because that glass is allowing the cold from outside to come through. And so the ice is able to form there because when it's touching the glass, it's getting the temperature outside. Even right now when I'm touching this window, I can feel how cold it is because I can feel more of the temperature outside than the temperature inside. As soon as I pull my hand away, it's warmer. Um, now, also certain surfaces like this can actually pull the heat out of your hand uh, because of their, uh, their thermal conductivity. And uh, so it's the same thing with the snakes. Their body temperature could be good. And now they go sit up against that glass and all of a sudden they're exposed to whatever's on the outside uh, and the heat's removed from their body and they're, they're getting a colder temperature. So even though your cage could be perfect in parameters, the animal could actually be too cold because it's sitting up against that. And you'd think they'd be smart enough to move, but they're not always. Uh, oftentimes when snakes get out, they seek really cold spots that make no sense for them to go. Um, you know, so you wanna keep that in mind. Now, if you're using a glass enclosure and the room is heated up to the temperature the snake needs, then that's not as big of a concern to you. But you also wanna think about efficiency. You know, some of us that live in colder climates or don't heat a whole room, when you're losing heat out of your caging, that's money out of your pocket. Uh, it takes more energy to get up to temperature if you're not retaining what you're producing. Uh, so plastic of you know equal size, you know thickness and all that to glass has a five to ten times better um, you know conductivity rate than glass. So glass, you're gonna lose a lot more heat out of there. So your heating elements are gonna kick on a lot more. You're gonna lose, a, you're gonna use a lot more energy. Now, if you want more of a gradient, sometimes that can be a good thing in certain situations, but by and large, the idea is to keep the cage at the temperature that you want it. Um, and so I know for me, I like that with plastic because now I know once I get that cage up to temperature, it's gonna hold that temperature better. It's more efficient less money out of my pocket. It's more consistent for the animal, which is what I want. I don't want all these fluctuations. I don't want it where if my room drops 10 degrees, now all of a sudden that cage is, is way colder or it's up against that glass and way colder. You know, whereas they sit up against the plastic, yes, the same thing's gonna happen because it's still gonna conduct and allow something, but it's much slower and much less. Uh, and so it's much less of a risk. So that's a big thing to keep in mind. Uh, when you're looking at caging options, people often ignore the science of stuff uh, and would rather look at their perception of, oh, I want to see my snake or, oh, I like it to be on display. 
and I get that. I wish I could have every snake that I owned on display because I love looking at them. I love spending time with them. I would love to be able to just sit there and watch what they do all day, but it's not fair to them. This is a species that doesn't want that. They don't want to sit there and be watched all day. They, they're not relaxed at that point. Um, they're much more relaxed when they know you can't see them. Uh, so we have to put our feelings aside sometimes and do what's best for the animals and what's best for the species that we're keeping and then tailor to the individual animal. You know, this is a fairly confident snake right there. Uh, so I could probably put her in a pretty big enclosure and not have a problem with it as long as I gave her, you know, retreats that she needed or whatever. But not every snake is like that. And I certainly wouldn't put her in here just yet. Maybe another six months from now or so, she'll be ready for something like that. But right now, you know, she would be extremely lost in that cage. And obviously you can't see it, the cage goes all the way down. Um, it's just, it's a lot of real estate for a snake like this, especially because these guys are so sedentary. You know, if this was an active species, uh, then, you know, more space is nice because they're gonna utilize it, they're gonna move around. It's more natural behavior for them. These guys are not that way. And, uh, you know, research is coming more and more and we're finding out more and more about snakes like this. And they're actually even less active than we may have thought. And we already thought they were pretty inactive. Um, so it's interesting to see, you know, what's being found out about them as we learn more and more and people spend more time researching them. That's such a cool snake. But uh, if you guys have any questions on this, uh, let me know. Uh, another thing when we're talking about our value, uh, that's one of the reasons why you get milk now in plastic containers instead of glass. You still can buy milk in glass and milk supposedly tastes better in glass because uh, it gets more of the natural flavor as the plastic kind of changes the flavor a bit. But if you take a glass bottle of milk and a plastic bottle of milk, uh, the plastic bottle will hold the cold longer. So if you leave it out on the counter and forget to put it in the fridge, it's going to take longer for it to spoil, which is obviously a benefit because we get busy and we do stupid things. Uh, so we might make a bowl of cereal and go sit down in the living room, watch a, an hour of a show, we come back. That glass bottle of milk is probably going to be close to room temperature by then. Whereas that plastic bottle will probably still retain a decent amount of its temperature. Um, so that's, that's why a lot of the products we use are plastic uh, when it comes to foods and things that we're going to store in the freezer or the refrigerator. Um, so keep that stuff in mind when you're, you're thinking about your setups and your enclosures and stuff. And like I said a million times, your room is always going to dictate, you know, what's going to be best for you. I have ambient heated rooms, so that helps with certain caging applications. If you don't, then you have to be mindful of that and make sure you're, you're working the right way. But be mindful if your room is not ambient heated, that plastic's going to hold your heat better than the glass is. So you're going to fight less and have a better chance of success. Not to mention when you're talking about thermostats and things like that, especially if you cheaped out and you didn't buy a good thermostat, it's gonna burn out a lot quicker going on and off all those times on that enclosure that's losing heat faster. Uh, so, you know, you'll put a lot of wear and tear on that and that puts your animals at risk too. So there's a lot of things to think about with this. Um, but don't judge people for what they use based on other people misusing it. Uh, base it on how that individual person is keeping and uh, whether it's right for the species that they're keeping. There's a lot of stuff that does well in all different enclosures and there's a few species that, you know, really do best in certain things. These guys, tubs are a home run for bloods and short tails. Um, I just have ever never found one that's not settled in and it's caging and done great. Um, I've dealt with hundreds of them. Uh, so it's not like I've had two or three and I'm telling you, oh no, mine doesn't like it. Which you see all the time with people. Um, and it's usually because there's husbandry off or they're not handling the snake properly. And so the animal's upset for a reason other than what they think it is. Um, but these guys do really great in that environment. They really thrive in there. Uh, you can do enrichment, not do enrichment. You can do a million different things within that caging for them. Uh, and, and they really do well in it. Plus it's easy to give ground level ventilation, which is really good for these guys being heavy breathers uh, and the way they go to the bathroom. When they unload, you know, it's not healthy for them to breathe that in. That ground level ventilation lets that dissipate. Whereas if your ventilation is only from above, it's just going to hang there because of the density of that. Um, and it's not going to get out and circulate properly. And uh, I love how I always talk about how strictly terrestrial they are and she's up, up, up. Um, but they will check things out. But you notice she's not really putting herself out there much. She's 
she's staying safe and with most of her weight on me. But beware, short tails are not the smartest about holding on. Like you notice, she's not coiled around me at all. She's just sitting on me. Uh, these guys are really easy to drop if you're not careful, especially as babies. If something makes them nervous and they, they thrash, they're hitting the deck. Uh, we'll see you guys. I uh, didn't do a contest this week. I got to mail out the other ones. I was waiting for the person to get me the information for the stickers. Uh, if you do want stickers, you know, message me on Instagram or on Facebook uh, or let me know on here and, and give me uh, a way to get in touch with you, email, whatever it is. And we will, uh, you know, we can, we can work that out. All right. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.